In this video, I'm going to show you how to install GNS3 version 2.0.0 beta 2. In this video, I'll show you the local install of GNS3 using a Cisco iOS image. In a separate video, I'll show you how to integrate the GUI with the GNS3 VM. Now, one of the best places to go for information is the GNS3 documentation. You can find the documentation at gns3.com. In the documentation section, you can click on release notes and you'll be able to get information about the various releases of GNS3. At the time of this recording, the current stable release is 1.5, but we're gonna look at version 2.0, which is now in beta, or beta, if you prefer pronouncing it that way. Now in this document, what's new in GNS3 version 2.0, Jeremy and Julian have provided great detail about things to be aware of before upgrading and answers to various frequently asked questions or FAQs. It's well worth your time reading through this to see the caveats or issues to be aware of when installing and upgrading, as well as to learn about the new features available, such as smart packet captures. I won't bore you going through the documentation. Have a look at this in your own time. Now, typically, when you want to download GNS3, you click on the download link and then click download. That'll take you to the current release of GNS3. So at the time of this recording, that's 1.5.2. What I've done here is go to GitHub, forward slash GNS3, forward slash GNS3 GUI, forward slash releases, and that will allow us to download the beta or beta version of GNS3. So I'm gonna click on GNS3 200 all-in-one EXE. I'm gonna save that to my local hard drive. And while I'm here, I'm gonna download the VMware Workstation zip file. That's only required if you are going to integrate GNS3 with the GNS3 VM. As mentioned in this video, I'm gonna do a GUI install. And in a subsequent video, I'll show you the integration between the GUI and the GNS3 VM. Be aware, however, that when using Windows or a Mac, the GNS3 VM is recommended. So the file that we're gonna start off with is a GNS3 all-in-one. I'm gonna double click on that file. We asked whether we wanna allow this app to make changes. I'm gonna say yes. In this example, I'm installing GNS3 on Windows 10. The wizard starts with the welcome message and it's recommended that you close all other applications before starting the setup. I've already done that, so I'm gonna click next. The next screen shows the license agreement. GNS3 is open source software available under the GNU general public license. So we're gonna to agree to the license we then need to select a startup menu. I'm going to stick with the default of GNS3 and click Next. We then have the option to select or unselect software to be installed. As an example, certain software such as Dynamips is required if you want to run the Cisco iOS locally on your PC. And other software such as GNS3 is obviously required to run GNS3. But you may, as an example, decide not to install SolarWinds or VPCS. I'm going to stick with the defaults and click Next. We're then told to select an install directory. I'm going to stick with the default once again and click Install. So what GNS3 does now is it installs the various software components that were selected. The first one is WinPCAP. I'm simply going to choose all the defaults and allow WinPCAP and other software to be installed. Now, this is something to be aware of. If you are in a part of the world where the internet bandwidth is poor, be aware that GNS3 is gonna to connect to the internet and download software. So it can take time for the installation to complete. As an example, GNS3 will download Wireshark and download other software, which may take a while depending on your internet speeds. So in this example, the SolarWinds response time viewer is being downloaded and installed. So just be aware that 
the initial installer doesn't contain all the software. So as an example, if you selected that the SolarWinds response time viewer should be installed, you may have to install the Microsoft.NET framework as I'm having to do in this example. So that means that additional software has to be downloaded and installed on your PC. So you may, as an example, not want to install some of the options, especially if your internet speeds aren't that great. For the SolarWinds registration, specify your email address and click Continue. So I can now click Next to install the SolarWinds response time viewer. And once again, I'm just going to select all the default options. Click Finish to complete the install of SolarWinds. The main GNS3 software is now installed. Jeremy and Julian have made the process very simple. As you can see here, the GNS3 install is completed. So I'm going to click Next. In this example, I'm not going to install the SolarWinds standard tool set. So I'm going to click Next and click Finish. Once you've completed the GNS3 install, you get a thank you message and you can now run GNS3 by double clicking the GNS3 icon. When GNS3 starts up for the first time, the setup wizard is displayed. We told once again that the GNS3 VM is strongly recommended on Windows and Mac OS. If you want to run a modern iOS, such as iOS V or IOU or ASAV or any other appliances from the GNS3 website, you should use the GNS3 VM. That's the way of the future. That's the best way to do things. You can also run the GNS3 VM on a remote server, such as on ESXi, if you want to share the GNS3 install with multiple users. For this initial video, I'm going to select Run Only Legacy iOS on my computer. So this is the old way of doing it. And I'll just do that here to get us started. I'm going to click Next. We need to specify the local server configuration. I'm going to leave it at the defaults and click Next. GNS3 contacts the local server. Make sure that it's working. In this case, it is, so I'm going to click Next. A summary is displayed of the local GNS3 server, so I'm going to click Finish. We now have multiple options, and the option that I'm going to choose is the traditional Cisco iOS. So I'm going to add an iOS router using a real Cisco iOS image. You have other options listed here as well, including Docker, VPCS, and others. But I'm going to go once again with a real Cisco iOS and click OK. We then need to select the iOS image. So I'm going to browse to my downloads directory and select the image that I currently have. Now, once again, it's really important to remember that GNS3 is not able to give you Cisco iOS images. Due to legal requirements, neither I or GNS3 can give you an iOS image. You'll need to provide that yourself. Once I've selected the iOS image, I'm asked whether I want to decompress the image. I'm going to say yes, because I want the image to boot up quicker, and decompressing it will do that for me. I can now click Next. I need to give a name to the router. So I'm just going to call that C3725 Local. Click Next. Now, this is an important thing to remember. This link, check for minimum and maximum RAM requirement. That'll take you to the Cisco website. You can then copy your image name into the Cisco Feature Navigator and click Search for Images. That will then tell you how much RAM is required by the image that you're using. So by default, GNS3 is only specified 128 mega RAM. This iOS image needs more than that. So I'm gonna change it to 256 and click Next. 
I can then specify the network adapters to add to my router. This will be router dependent. And I've simply selected a fast ethernet module and a serial module that allows me to add WIC 1Ts or WIC 2Ts. In other words, add serial interfaces to the router. Click Next. This is also very important. Make sure that an idle PC value has been selected. If it hasn't, click on this button and allow GNS3 to find an idle PC value for you. So mine's already been selected, so I'm gonna click Finish. A summary is displayed. I'm gonna click OK. I can now start my first GNS3 project. So I'm gonna say first GNS3 project, click OK. So now under the router menu, I can drag my new 3725 router to the workspace. And in this case, I'll drag two of them. I'll just zoom in here. I can then add a link. I'm gonna select this option to show labels so I can see which interfaces are being used. And I'm gonna click Start to start up both the routers. I'm then gonna click on the console connect to all nodes to open up a console connection to both the routers. So both my routers have booted up. So on router one, I could say interface F0 slash zero, no shut, and configure an IP address on that interface, such as the following. On router two, interface F0 slash zero, no shut, IP address 10.1.1.2. And let's see if we can ping router one. Yes, we can. So I've successfully configured a very basic GNS3 network. What I'll do as a last test is create a loopback interface and then enable EIGRP on all interfaces. Do the same on router two, so router EIGRP one, network zero, 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 interface loopback zero, and I'll configure this loopback interface, and then I should be able to ping the loopback of router one, which I can. There's the routing table of router two, on router one, show IP route, same thing. I can see the loopback of router two in the routing table. So I should be able to ping that loopback address. Now these routers are running older version of code. So EIGRP is doing automatic summarization. And this kind of information is not GNS3 specific. This is specific to the iOS that you're using. So as an example, on both these routers, I could type no order summary, show IP route again. I should, once convergence has taken place, now see a slash 32 mask, which I do. So there's my slash 32 network advertised in EIGRP, and I can ping the loopback. So that concludes this video showing you how to download and install GNS3 and get it running using a local install of GNS3 on Windows. So at the moment, I've got it running locally. I don't have a remote server configured. I don't have the GNS3 VM configured. It is recommended that you download the GNS3 VM and you integrate GNS3 with the GNS3 VM. But if you prefer, you could run GNS3 locally using the traditional or old method of Dynamips. So once again, here we're using a local server. In other words, GNS3 is running on my desktop PC. I'm not using the GNS3 VM. But again, it's recommended that you use the GNS3 VM and it is required for any appliances in the GNS3 marketplace. So if you went to the marketplace on GNS3, any of these appliances require the use of the GNS3 VM. So as an example, if you wanna use the iOS V Layer 2 appliance or iOS V appliance or ASA 
V appliance, you need to use the Genus 3 VM. Okay, so that concludes this video showing you how to download, install and configure Genus 3 on a Windows PC. Thank you for watching and I wish you all the very best.